looking at what is on the table at the moment, the RBS franchise, were you over-enthusiastic about it when it, when, it, when it first came online? Yeah, I mean, I have to be careful what I say here because obviously we're in the process of, Understand. of, of discussion, as you know. Um, but in terms of a franchise, it's rather a unique one. You know, these things don't happen very often. Um, and I think it would be um, remiss not to look at it very seriously. Right, um, but, but just like the AIG franchise when it came on the table, um, any, or any bank or any institution that wants to buy a regional franchise runs into this problem of different markets and different rules about what you can acquire. Now, if the franchise were broken up, were, had to be broken up, uh, would you still look at it? Is it still? Oh, yeah, because I mean, I think, you know, you, you don't necessarily want the whole thing or you don't necessarily want pieces of it, you know, where you don't feel you can execute. Um, in, in terms of um, an integration. So I think you've got to be uh, realistic about these things, and, and uh, believe me, I am. What do you have in terms of internal capabilities, in terms of the, the quality of the people uh, who can go out there and look at um, opportunities, uh, and what have you been building on the back office side that, that will e enable you to integrate what you're taking on and, and um, you know, work out the cost factors and so on? Well, I've, I've completely changed the organisation of, uh, uh, you know, the, the management um, structure of the organisation. Um, we've we've reskilled it. I mean, there were some very good people in, in ANZ, but we've we've shifted them around to really make best use of that skill set. We've also brought in uh, quite a lot of um, external hires, uh, people with a lot of international experience. You know, I felt one of the things in Australia was that there um, there was, I think, some very good domestic. Um, experience, but um, they were light on the international side. And, and um, if you're running an emerging markets business, it's a fundamentally different culture to running um, a mature OECD bank. You know, it, you, you have to have that ability to have both sets of management skills. Uh, is that one for the other? Um, you know, is, does something give in the process? No, no. I mean, you can run it very, very um, easily. I mean, look at HSBC. I mean, it was a classic example of how you could run the businesses alongside. But you have to recognize that they require different skill sets to, to, uh, to manage them both. Who do you see as your peer or your aspiring neighborhood um, as you grow ANZ? I would see that um, certainly the, the, uh, the competitors in the region are, are the, um, the big regional banks, so it would be City, um, uh, HSBC, Stanchart. Um, in Australia, of course, you can't take your eye off um, of you know, the, the, big, the big four. The, right. or the, 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 the For big, different the reasons. Other three. And, yeah. yeah, and because domestically they are still very very uh, um, heavy competition. Um, so um, it's different in each market you look at, and, and you look at the local banks and, and the local businesses, but uh, regionally I would say yes, it's those. And how much of your own personal time do you spend in Australia, and how much of your time do you now spend you know, trying to get a sense you know, of what's going on? I spend most of my time in Australia still. Um, and I think as a result of some of the remedial work that we had to do, um, that was the correct thing to do. Um, so a I lot of work on the organic front still. Yeah, and I still think that we need to do, um, I need to spend um, more time on that this year you know, as, as, we, as we move through and through into 2010. But that's not to say that I don't get about. Um, and, and certainly, you know, where I have tried to put quite a bit of uh, time is to expand our, um, our shareholder base uh, to make it a bit more international. And, and indeed our debt holders, you know, I think it's, it's one thing to look after um, your your equity holders, but um, I didn't think we'd spend it. What, what's the profile of your of your of your shareholders today? Yeah, it's about forty percent institutional, um, twenty percent um, um, in institutional internationally institutional, and forty percent um, uh, uh, retail domestic. And uh, yeah. would you like to see that change? Would, I would like to see the international the side just build a little bit because uh, they tend to be quite long term holders. What's important to you as an aspiring regional bank in the Asia-Pacific region for what needs to be put in place for there to be more of a level playing field so that you can play better in what you want to build? Um, oh, that's an interesting, an interesting point. I, 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 I'm not too worried by um, the concept of level playing field because I understand completely the 
the various national interests. And you know, I think China comes under an awful lot of criticism as to you know as to why it should um, open its its doors to foreign banks and and deregulate faster. You know, when you think about it, the the first priority that the Chinese government have is to China, um, and really what they have been doing is deregulating at a pace which suits the growing economy. And I think that's correct. You know, and frankly, we have to work around that. We have to work with those restrictions. You have no you know. illusions about what no, no, countries have to do. No, absolutely none. You know, and, and I think, you know, in fact, I have a sympathy for, for them and um, you know, the requirement to locally incorporate in certain countries. I quite understand the rationale. You, it may not be as efficient as you would like to, to, to run the operation, but you know you have to work within the within the rules that you're given. And uh, the one thing I do want ANZ to be um, known for is to be uh, a very compliant and, and a good corporate citizen in every country that we operate. Right, but at the same time, you're in a position to rally the Australian government to facilitate your entry to different countries? I think the Australian government is remarkably helpful. They're very, um, they're very pro-Asia, um, as you know. I mean, I think that there is yeah, a, right, yeah. yeah, I think that, um, you know, the, that there is an understanding of the importance of Asia to Australia's future, uh, and we certainly want to be part of that. Um, so it's, I guess it's a pragmatic use of, of, uh, of that support. Give us a peek at what we can expect to see in the next six to 12 months uh, from ANZ on the regional front? Um, well, ho hopefully we'll I'm be... giving you a short piece yeah. on this one. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully we'll be building our business. I mean, I, I, I think we've been making very good progress. And, um, you know, I think it will be more of the same and, and hopefully we'll, we'll have bettered down a, a, an acquisition or two. But, let, but let's wait and see. Good. Thanks very much, Mike. And Thanks all the very best to you. Okay. Thanks again. a lot.